All right, so you know things happen in life, and I was listening to a really good word from Bill Johnson today. And so my stance today is I am not giving Satan any glory. I'm not going to give him any glory for the things that come at me. I'm not going to give him any glory for any attacks. I'm not going to give him any glory for any problems that come up because he doesn't deserve it. We never want to take our eyes off Jesus. Good morning. You are at Lighthouse Christian Church today. And that's because that's where Jesus brought you in today because he has a word for you. He has some ministry to do with you today. I'm not doing announcements right out the gate. We're just going to get started and get right into worship, okay? So if you're new here, there's a connection card in the pew in front of you. Please fill that out. We put all of our ties, our offerings, our paperwork. There's a box on that wall and a box on that wall. You can fill your information out and put it on the wall. So you're here today to experience God. And you are here today to embrace his grace are here today to engage with others. That's what we want to move into. So everything starts with a grateful heart, right? A heart of gratitude. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just can't wait to just get started praising you and worshiping you and loving on you and letting you love on us. Father, you are the you are our strength and you are our comfort. I pray that your favor surrounds us like a shield today, Father God. It's a shield that is just deflecting arrows, deflecting problems, deflecting anything that the enemy has coming at us because he just has no permission to be here today in Jesus' name. Thank you, I thank you, Father, for your mercies that are new and fresh every day. Today, Father, I'm declaring healing, I'm declaring restoration, I'm declaring your peace, I'm declaring your love, and I'm declaring your divine favor over these people today, Father God, your people, the people who came here today to lift your name high and be blessed and learn more about you. Come on, Holy Spirit, teach us about how great your Jesus is. We love you, Lord, with all our heart. We want to hear from you today. Let everyone that has breath praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church family. Let's stand up and worship the Lord. Take this, Kelly.
house and building your temple, bringing up your people, Lord.
Father God, how precious it is that you take all of the stains, the blemishes that are on our person, and you bore them. You wash it away on a daily basis, on a daily, daily basis, Lord. None of us are clean. The only reason we get to stand before you today is because your son Jesus covers us with his own cloak. Thank you, Father.
forsake me. He is with me always. Lo, until the end, he will be with me. We're done. Let's just continue to worship. Would you guys stand with me? It's, uh, Joe's pulling one out of his back pocket. <laughs>
Tell him he's worthy. Come on, he's so worthy. Lord, you're so worthy. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was Good morning, everybody. We're just going to flow right into announcements so we can flow right into the word. So you have a bulletin that tells you everything that's going on around here. Um, so please look at it and get plugged in somewhere. Find your people. And I'm saying that because I've heard lots of great testimonies this week. Mona. Handbell Choir. Practice starts in a month. Today we're having a breakfast fundraiser, and that is for the missionaries that are going on the first missions trip we have coming up. So they're raising money for that. It's a donation, so please go sow some seed over and, and eat some pancakes. They have bacon, don't they? Spend, okay. I think that they have maple-infused bacon. And that they have sausage, just sausage links. They have chocolate pancakes. So if you are a chocolate lover, go get you some. And what else do they have? It is. You're supporting a missionary. You're actually, all right, in all honesty, you're planting seed. And what you sow, you reap. And so you're planting seed to send these people out to do the gospel. They're commissioned. That's what we're supposed to do. So go, go get involved. Go, go over there and bless them and get yourself blessed at the same time. All right, so you know I've been super excited about Encounter Night. That's tonight at 6.30. It's the River School of Supernatural Ministry. We're having another Encounter Night. And if you were here for the last one, you remember, I couldn't even, I was just over there in a ball of tears because you know I cry when the Holy Spirit comes on me. I just do. And I'm not afraid of it. It's so powerful. You come expecting to see the face of Jesus tonight. That's at 6.30. It's not here. We're going to their church tonight. I love that. It's the River of Life Church, and um, what does it say? It's on Merritt Island. Court. It's on Merritt. It's on here on Merritt Island on Courtney. You know, over by the Publix, over by Courtney. And so it's the River of Life Church. Go check that out. There's a lot of us going over there tonight, so it's going to be exciting. Did you hear him? In between the Catholic Church and Publix, right in the middle. 
River of Life Church. Get it. All right, Donnie's class on Monday nights, they're starting a new series called Faith and Confession. It's based on a book by Charles Capps, and in this study, you will learn God's principles of faith and confection, uh, confection, confession to unlock the supernatural work in you. The class starts tomorrow night at 645 in the conference room, and I have a great testimony about that class. So for you all who were in there, um, the anointing just fell so heavy on that class, and prophecy was spoken, and prophecy was received by the person that was spoken onto, and she is now on the path. And she was, it, it was beautiful. So people have been giving me testimonies about what's going on in the classes and stuff, and I'm not even, our Thursday night class isn't even on here, but I'm going to stop and tell you about it for a minute, because if you're not coming, then you're missing out on what's going on. We're soldiers that are being trained, okay? You're being trained in God's army. You're being trained to go out and do the work of the Lord. On Thursday nights, we're, we're actually working on prayer. So I've got these amazing testimonies that are coming from people. Um, we have two sisters that sit over here. They drive Uber. They drive for Uber. They have been activated. They're praying for people that are getting in their cars. They're stepping out in faith, and God's sending them people that they're speaking over. They're, they're, they're speaking life into people. And I have another guy who told me, I was in McDonald's, and I just felt the Lord telling me, pray for the woman in front of you. Just ask, just pray for her. So he listened. This is what these classes are bringing out. They're empowering you. Jesus is empowering you. He stepped out and prayed for her. She ended up having cancer. She's crying, hugging him, thanking him for praying for her. Well, his son watched everything that goes on, right? So when they get in the car, his son just, get, just cried and hugged him and said, Dad, that's, that was so beautiful. Beautiful testimonies of what Jesus is doing in your lives. Bring me more. I love to hear them. I think testimonies, they just keep Jesus alive. They're amazing, and they just spread God's love and his knowledge. And so you got to come. you got to check it out. Men's Daytime Bible Study, we're starting a new series on the book of Revelations. That's going to start on August 16th. That's Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., Sweet Souls Ladies Luncheon, that's our women um, get together at uh, Longhorn, and they are going to do that on August 16th as well. Um, the, wis uh, the Widows of Wisdom are meeting on August 26th. Our next fellowship luncheon is foods from around the world, so whatever you can think of, bratwurst, German potato salad, something fun, something you've never tried before, bring it. If it's from another country, everybody would like to try it. Here's a new class that's starting. It's our young adults class. It's called Launch, and it's going to be taught by Jenna Radlin. And I was with her the night a prophet spoke over her to activate her in this ministry. It's powerful, and it's called Launch. And it's for anyone who's 18 to 29 are invited. They're kicking off with a pizza party. So let her know if you can come. And, if, if you can come. and Grief Share... I've told you about that. That's for it's a 13-week class that's beginning on uh, Tuesday, August 22nd, in the coffee room, and that's um, people who are going through loss and grief. And it's a it's an amazing class that transform me, and you will be transformed as well. And if you're giving, thank you so much. If you're giving, we have the boxes on the walls. And if you've been dedicated to seriously bringing down our debt. We're debt-free 2023. I haven't mentioned it in a while, but we just thank you, everyone who is partnering with us to get, we want to be debt-free. Jesus said we're going to be debt-free um, because we have, because we're sowers into the kingdom. Lighthouse Church is a sower into the kingdom. And so if you would like to sow into that as well. All right. I'm ready for some word. Oh, we have a video. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You were born for such a time as this. When God formed man out of the dust of the earth, he thought of you. You have been God's plan since the beginning of time. There is a call on your life to rebuild the ruins, to repair destroyed cities, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to release the glory of God in all the earth seeing Jesus get all he paid for. It is for this reason 
you are alive. As close as the heartbeat in your chest, as close as the rumbling of rockets being launched into the unknown, into impossibility, is the call being set forth to release God's dream through your life. The time is now and God is calling you. Take your place. Carry the glory of God into your city. Release the dream of God on the earth. Heaven, come. All right. I'd like for you guys to welcome Sandra Miller from River School Supernatural Ministries. She's going to tell us a little bit about what they do over there, and then we're going to join them tonight for uh, worship night. All right? Glad to have you. Welcome to Lighthouse. And you've been here before, but welcome. Is it on? Oh, there you go. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for um, opening the doors for us. I think Pastor Kevin is a very cool pastor. Love him, know him for many, many years, and so so proud of him and everything that he's doing in this church. Um, but you just saw a video of, of our promo video. We, we do have a supernatural school of ministry here. Um, how many of you know that Jesus is actually, um, he's building a new breed of Jesus lovers in Brevard County? There's something new that's happening. There's something new that you can feel it. It's like the seasons are changing, right? Um, so this is what the school is about. He's building a new breed where they're, they're not interested in recognition. They're not interested in having a microphone. And they're not interested in building a name for themselves. They're actually, their only interest is to make him known wherever they go. Their desire to make Jesus famous by living a pure, holy life, full of integrity and character, and their heart's desires is to live in the fear of the Lord. Amen. So what we do is we build, we equip, and we empower big people to be able to connect them to their mission on this earth, to be able to release his beautiful glory and we do this by building a very strong community. So a whole school, we build family. We build healthy family, healthy community. We speak love, we speak truth, and also um, his grace and power in all of us. So that's what our school is about. Our school is not a discipleship school. It's not a Bible school. It's actually a transformational school. And it's a leadership school. Um, we allow Jesus to come in to rebuild us to restructure us, um, changing us from the inside out to be able to do what we're called to do. How many of you know that you are born at such a time as this to release and advance his kingdom? Um, so that's really what we do. We have uh, three years. Um, the first year is all about identity. The second year is about starting to build that leadership in the third year, I'm actually uh, the overseer of third year, and I'm also the associate director of the school, is where I actually take into action everything you learn, and I just kind of push you to jump off the cliff kind of thing. They, they have a lot of fun. They get offended with me at the beginning, but then they love me around December. They're like, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Some of the subjects that we teach on are prophetic ministry, evangelism, leadership, communication. We do teach you how to create your own sermon and how to preach because we are to go to outside of the four walls and preach the gospel. Um, how to live a supernatural lifestyle and kingdom living. And what we do too is we meet on Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights. And Tuesday nights we actually, this year, are going to start with prayer and worship for the first 30 minutes. I believe we are in a season that prayer has to increase in our lives, in our own personal lives. So we really want to teach our students that prayer has to be uh, essential for what is coming on Brevard County. We also have a passion for worship and His presence. Um, if you come to our church tonight, you're going to experience a little bit. We love His presence. His presence is number one. We are nothing with his presence. Um, and then right after that on Tuesday nights, you go into class um, and you actually have a teacher, very anointed, very experienced, very seasoned teacher. And they're going to talk about that subject tonight. And then 
On Wednesday nights, we do the same. We start with worship, and then we do what we call revival group. Revival group is having 10, 20 people around the room, and we just allow Holy Spirit to do his thing. And sometimes it looks like we're just talking. Sometimes it looks like we're on the ground crying because we feel his presence so much. And sometimes it looks like that there is some inner healing happening, right? So it, we just give him the whole room. We give him the whole space to do whatever he wants. And then tonight, um, 6.30, we're actually combining two school of supernatural ministries, one from Hawaii and then our school here in Merritt Island. And we're actually going to come by and we're going to encounter him. Well, what does that mean? That means we're for an hour and a half, two hours, we're going to worship and minister to him and then allow him to minister to us. I don't know if you never had an encounter, but I encourage you to come. An encounter and just one word of God will change your life forever. It will completely transform you. Wherever you're going through, or if you just want to experience a glimpse of what the school looks like, I invite, I invite you to come tonight and just go there and hang out with us, and you'll experience the goodness of the Father. And um, we are a prophetic community as well, so we just love you, and thank you so much. Pastor. what God's doing. You know, we're, we're tearing down the walls. I, I'm, I'm doing some unprecedented things as a pastor at the church. I'm actually refusing to be afraid of every other church. <laughs> Thinking they're going to steal you guys away. You know what? If, if they can steal you, then you probably need to be over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, we are just believing for God to do incredible things. Uh, we're going to jump in the Word today, and uh, yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing all right. We got to get over to the breakfast, right? You guys hungry? We got a couple things over there. It's really exciting. Uh, we have this, Sandra. We did that. But uh, Janine and Jessica that are going on the Dominican trip have a table over there, and her husband makes cutting boards. They're incredible, nice. They do a lot of crafts and different things. We're really asking you to, you know, some of you may give towards the breakfast and that will support the whole team, but a couple of the members of the team are a little bit behind on their fundraising, so they have tables over there. And that would be Janine and Jessica, because they're raising money for two of them as a family to go on the trip. It's $1,495 per person, right? So they're trying to raise three grand, uh, where another, every other team member is trying to raise half that. But uh, then the other person that's really behind on their fundraising is uh, Pastor Kevin. Because <laughs> I wanted to make sure everybody else got their fundraising beforehand. But I have a table over there, and I have a uh, caregiver for our mother, my mother-in-law, Lisa's mom. And her name is Nancy, and she has worked and worked and worked on making these beautiful... Uh, books that have sculptures carved into them. And so I have a table over there. Nancy's here. Wave Nancy. She's like, don't point me out. But thank you. She has done such an amazing job on these books. They are beautiful. And there's a suggested donation on those that'll help uh, go for my trip. And I would run over there and get your pick first because I think they'll go fairly quick. But, um, you know, just support. And I just love that she's giving to missions, and then through that, you can give to missions. And we're all sewing, and we're getting a beautiful book that we can put up and just remember the trip. And then we're going to be giving away a house on the trip, okay, as a church. That's part of what the breakfast money will raise, the money to give away a house for someone over there. And uh, there's a lady over there that is uh, working with Haitian uh, refugees, and she's teaching kids that nobody else will teach, and we're going to go and we're going to bless them. So uh, thanks for being a part of that. We're going to run right out of here and go straight to the fellowship hall because we didn't have coffee in the coffee room this morning, and it's all over there. So that means if you start falling asleep, I'm at, hey, you guys ready to get in the Word? All right, here we go. So 
How many of you guys have ever heard of the scripture John 3.16? Anybody? You know, think about it. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Have you ever seen uh, the John 3.16, you know, logo, scripture? It's in pictures. It's in the goalposts. It's on all the TVs. Everywhere you look, it's even on the Simpsons. Go back. It's even on the Simpsons, okay? So uh, John 3.16, go again. Go again. Tebow's got it on his cheeks. It's in the goalpost. It's everywhere you turn. You ever wonder why? It's the message of messages for the world that God loves you and he loves you so much that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have what? Everlasting life. So we have been promised everlasting life. But you know what? Nobody ever looks at the verse after that verse. If you ever, I want to look at the verse after that verse today. And it says, John 3, 17. Are you ready? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. What? What? If you look at the church right now, everywhere, if you globally look at the church, they're not getting it on this scripture. They're condemning people. They're, they're throwing people out of their churches if they don't dress right, if they don't look right. It, it, it shouldn't be so. You know that I've actually been condemned before? Think about this. My friend's parents would not let them hang around me when I was in high school. Shocker, right? They're like, stay away from that guy. With good reason. I was dealing drugs. I was living dangerously. Doing crazy things. Do you realize that I've been guilty of crimes. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what they are because I can't create circumstantial evidence on tape. <laughs> they could come back. So they're still trying to solve some of those cases. <laughs> but I've been guilty of sins in my life. Think about that. I've even been to court. I know none of you have ever been to court. I probably, if you really looked at it, still deserve to be in jail right now. Think about that. You know, I, I remember when I first heard the gospel. I've told this story a little bit before, but for some of you who may not have heard it before. I was a drug addict. I was leaving town. I had to get out of town because everybody I knew did drugs. I had to get away from drugs, so I moved to go live with my dad in North Carolina. Radically discovered that I'm the drug problem because I found all the drugs where I went. But my dad gave me a job. He was managing a radio station. And he sat me in a radio booth. And he said, hey man, I hate to break it to you. But you're the low man on the totem pole. You got Sunday duty. You got to babysit three pastors when they come on the air and preach. So I'm sitting through a glass like this. With, another, with pastors on the other side of the glass. Preaching this I mean, hellfire message back in the 80s, right? Crazy. I'd have to wash the glass after each one of them from all the spit that would come out of their mouth. That's why we took the front row down here. People were complaining. <laughs> but listening to the Word of God that much every week Hour and a half every week, 30 minute program, 30 minute program, 30 minute program, every week. 
wore me down. It, it, it got inside me. The Word of God became alive to me. And, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm a sinner. I recognized and realized that I needed Jesus Christ in my life. I understood that I was condemned, that my sin was real, and that I needed help. I'm in trouble. I need you, God. Help me. And I did. I cried out to God, and he, guess what? He showed up. I got baptized. But, you know, we have a world out there of people that were just like I was. I didn't know I was a sinner. I just was doing everyday life. I, you know what? I'm a teenager. We party. That's what we do. And then somebody said, you know, you don't have to do that. You can actually be a teenager and live your life for God. You can actually be a young adult and live your life for God and not have to run around and, and get DUIs and do drugs and, you know, get in car wrecks and drown and do things that are stupid and end up dead. Like many of my friends. You see, God saved me. But I had to understand that I was a sinner. Look at this, Romans 3, 23 through 26 says this, For all have sinned and fallen short of what? The glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by His blood through faith. That is a very key point right there. To demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed, to demonstrate at this present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. You see, what happened to me is I met God through his word and I believed in Jesus. And in believing in Jesus, by His blood, through faith, God's righteousness came into my life and He passed over my sins. And He made me the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You see, the Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. And under the law, we're going to die. According to the Ten Commandments, without Jesus in your life, you're doomed. <laughs> Say, I'm doomed. Without Jesus. Let's leave that. Take, let's not forget that part. You see there's consequences in life. The law produced an awareness of sin. That's what the Ten Commandments were, were made to do. To show you you're a sinner. You see before the Ten Commandments were given. There was no judgment that, that was given towards men. So there was no way that God could judge anyone. So the Ten Commandments were given so that judgment could come, but judgment only needed to come so that Jesus could come and wipe away the judgment. That's the new covenant that we live under that I talked about under the promises of God last week. Because guess what? You've all broken the law somewhere. Somehow, we all fall short according to Romans 3.23. I'm going to prove it to you. You ready? Everybody put your seatbelt on. You ready? Here we go. Top ways people break the law. What do you think the number one way is? Speeding. Come on. You lead foot's got it. I know none of you ever speed, but I have to say, I have actually exceeded the speed limit once or twice in my life or more. So what does that mean? I'm guilty, right? According to the law, I should have a long bunch of tickets. How about the next one? Talking and texting while driving. Did you know that was illegal? Hello? You guys got real quiet on that one. Did you know that was illegal? You can't do that. How about this one? Driving through a red light. See, I was amazed, like, half of these are all driving stuff. So we drive our cars, and 
all that. But did you know that when the light turns red, it doesn't mean punch it <laughs> and speed <laughs> while you're texting because that's why you didn't see the light. See, they're all tied together. And then there's illegally parking. You know, in, in, in our area, that's not as bad. But go illegally park in New York or somewhere in a big city. They'll put that boot on your car. I saw the funniest fail army the other day. This guy was driving with the boot. His tire was gone. It's scraping all the way. He's going home. He's like, <laughs> sparks are flying off of it. He's like, I'll teach you to boot my car. <laughs> not wearing your seatbelt. Back in the Napster days, illegally downloading music. I think we, we fact-checked re riding your bike on the sidewalk, right? And what was the other one? Did I already say it? Yeah. What was it? Okay, yeah, I didn't do that one yet. But that one's coming next, after riding your bike. So those two are actually legal. So you can ride your bike on the sidewalk. We fact-checked it. And you can eat and drink while you're driving. I don't recommend it, but you ever have that just, it's always the cheese sauce. You know, and you're like, just right down your chest. And then you're like, not paying any attention to what you're doing. By taking illegal drugs, shocker. Not cleaning up after your dog. Busted. All right, you get it? We all break the law. Somebody, is, is there anybody who's never done anything illegal in here? Ashley, I'm not shocked. <laughs> She's like, that's me. Here's the deal. We break the law somewhere, all of us have. You, me, people everywhere. We've done it, okay? But God never breaks the law. Jesus never broke the law. He fulfilled the law and he was fully righteous, fully God, completely, never sinned. God is holy. Can we settle that issue? And that means Jesus walked the earth and he lived a holy life on the earth. Only person that has ever done it. But we're not <laughs> holy in our own strength. And that's what I want to share with you today. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So our goal needs to be to be in Him. Not in ourselves, not in our own plans, not in our own desires, not in what we want to go do, what we think we should do in the world. We have to submit ourselves in, under Jesus Christ so that we can be made the righteousness of God. Because if we don't, one day we're going to get to heaven and the gavel is going to fall and it's going to be guilty. But see, in Christ, we are what? Case closed, not guilty. Bring that up. That's the title of the message today. The case has been closed against anybody that will place themselves under Jesus. It doesn't matter whatever I've done wrong in my life, all the things that I couldn't tell you, and some of the things that I can tell you, the things that you've done wrong, every one of those things will go to trial, but I'm here today to tell you that if you have accepted Jesus Christ and you've given your life to him, the, the verdict will be case closed, not guilty. Isn't that good news? If you're in Christ, it's done. Jesus paid the price for your punishment, for your sh sins, for your shortcomings. Jesus paid all of that. He was holy. He was perfect. He had done nothing wrong yet. He who knew no sin became sin for you so that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus so that when God looks at you, he's like, case closed, not guilty. You are holy. All because of what Jesus has done for you. 
There's nothing you could do. It's a free gift. There's nothing you could do in your own strength to win your case. There's not an attorney out there that can get you off the hook. And we all know some people get away with stuff. But I'm here today to tell you from the eternal perspective, you're not going to pull the wool over God's eyes. So don't try. Use the plan that he gave us. Come to God and, and allow him to be who it is that he wants to be for you, your redeemer. And just be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So what, is, what do you have to do to do that? Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just say, God, I believe that you paid the price for my sins. And I'm going to accept that by faith. And then the blood will cover you according to Romans. Look, it says, by his blood through faith, he demonstrates his righteousness and he passes over your sins that were previously committed that he might be just and the justifier of anybody who will put their faith in Jesus. So what's our job? Put our faith in Jesus. What's Jesus' job? To redeem us. And he already did that. When he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. What was finished? His plan to redeem you was done. Everything that you needed from him was given to you in that moment. That's when you got healed. That's when you got delivered. That's when the power of God came on your life to wipe away your guilty conscience and purge your conscience from dead works so that you can serve the living God, that's when all of that happened, when he said it is finished. But see, we, we're messed up. We think the case is still open, and we're running around sinning, and then we're thinking, well, I've got to do something and get something going there. And God's like, no, I already closed the case on you. Your sin has been dealt with once and for all. It's over. You don't have to keep focusing on the fact that all have sinned anymore because you have... Put yourself under Jesus. Amen. You don't have, you, we're spending way too much time on behavioral modification. It doesn't work. We need to put ourselves over on, into the justification by faith in the blood of Jesus category. It's the only one that works. Because you can't be good enough in your own strength. You can't modify your behavior enough to be good. Enough. You can be good. Some of you are very good people. But you can't be good enough when you put the standard against the holy God. We all fall short and we've all sinned. But the case has been closed. It's done. Can anybody say amen? Because that's really good news. You know that there's no sin that isn't covered by the grace of God. You know Jesus wiped everybody's sins away? When he said it is finished, every person that will ever be born, every person that was ever in the past or will ever be in the future, their sins were forgiven in that moment. Every sin they would ever commit, even the willful sin. Ooh. Somebody say willful. Every sin was eradicated by the blood of Jesus. But see, the problem is, is that we aren't putting ourselves under the blood of Jesus. It's not a sin problem. It's a faith in the, in the gift of God problem that people are suffering from in this world. They don't know who they are in Christ, so they're running around trying to be something they're not. Just be the righteousness of God in Christ by faith. That's all God is asking from you, is to trust in the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ, to allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse you, and then just to be cleansed. Amen. Somebody just say, I just need to be cleansed. Once and for all. But no, I, well... You know, we do still need to repent if we're doing stupid stuff. Don't get me wrong. You need to turn away from that stuff. It's not a license to sin. Is it?
know, if, if, if you need to repent, repent, but don't let it affect who you are. Because God's not looking at your sin. You will. You need to repent because you'll look at your sin and then you will actually run away from God because you think He can't possibly love you because you're in sin, because you don't understand you're the righteousness of God. So you're turning around, you're looking at your sin and you're focusing on your sin. You're living under the law and now the condemnation is coming upon you. And then, I mean, think about it this way. You ever owed anybody money? And then you see them coming. They're walking down the mall and you owe them 10 grand. And you haven't called them in two months. What are you going to do? You're going to tuck into the store. You're going to run. You're going to hide. Right? I would. <laughs> you duck into that store and then you're hiding. They look in there and say, hey, pastor, how you doing? What are you doing in Victoria's Secret? <laughs> <laughs> if we need to repent, repent. Man, but don't live under this whole thing like, oh yeah, I can do anything I want. No, live under the pretense that God gave me such a huge gift. I don't want to let him down. I don't want to disappoint him. If we're living the other way, that's messed up. It is it's messed up. God doesn't condemn us. He, he restores us. Amen? You know, we're not called by God. You see, if God is looking at us that way, this is my final little point, and then we're going to baptize Martita. So you guys go, go start getting ready. Her husband's going to baptize her today. Isn't that exciting? So, you know, we got the baptismal tank going. And, but listen to this, all right? God doesn't condemn us. He restores us. If we are found in Christ, right, and we are the righteousness of God in Christ, and we're without sin, even though we have sin, we're without it by faith because Jesus is washing it away, right? Then the case is closed. We're not guilty, right? So then we turn around and we look at somebody else and we go, You did this, Val. How dare you? You can't come to our church if you're going to live your life that way. And we condemn. And we look at people and we tear them down. And we bring the law into their life when we're living under grace, supposedly. Well, the Bible says there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So why are we killing our wounded Christian brothers and sisters? Why are we stringing them up and dragging them down the streets for their life? Wow. <laughs> I like it. If we've been made new, why can't we take the same attitude that God has towards us and use that attitude towards others? Hey. It's revolutionary. What? You mean... I can actually look at them and say, they're the righteousness of God if they're in Christ Jesus. And if they're not in Christ Jesus, all I need to be looking at is how can I get them there? Not how can I condemn them? How can I beat them up? How can I make them feel bad about themselves? No. We should, that should be, a, a, <clears throat> we've got to go save them. That's why Jesus said, go and preach the gospel, the good news. What's the good news? You're not judged. It's case closed. It's not guilty for you. If you will place yourself in Christ Jesus, you can be free. So we got to stop this judgment thing. It's very dangerous. Romans 8. So there is now no condemnation awaiting those who belong to Jesus Christ for the power of the life-giving Spirit. And this power is mine through Christ Jesus has freed me from the vicious circle of sin and death. We aren't saved from sin's grasp, 
by knowing the commandments of God because we can't and don't keep them. But God put into effect a different plan to save us. He sent His Son in a human body like ours, except that ours are sinful, and He destroyed sin's control over us by giving Himself as a sacrifice for our sins. So now we can obey God's laws if we follow after the Holy Spirit and no longer obey the evil old nature within us. So, our old nature wants to condemn people, to judge people, and it wants to judge ourselves. It wants to feel bad about all the things that we do, but Jesus has given us the greatest of gifts, eternal life and salvation through his blood. You have been made new. You're totally new. Matthew 7, 1 through 4. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Does what I just shared with you bring a new meaning to this scripture? Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? Don't be a plank eye. God so loved that he gave. Right? We got to give. We got to give the love of God. We got to give people the forgiveness that Jesus has given us. Someone say amen. You don't know what they've done, pastor. You don't know what I've done. I don't know what you've done. Does it really matter if it's under the blood? You're washed or you're not. So, well, I've got gray Georgia clay on me, but you've got Florida sand on you. It's all dirt. Sin is sin. There's no sin greater than the other when you put it against the holy God. You can be a liar. You can be a murderer. Sin is sin. Now, in the earth realm, there are cons greater consequences for sin. I'm not saying you can just go get away with anything. They'll throw you in jail. You be, have a prison ministry. <laughs> right? Galatians 5.13 For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. Do you see it? Ephesians 4.32 Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. John 15, 12 and 13. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for a friend. Romans 13, 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Are you judging other people? Why don't we close the case on them and call them not guilty the way that Jesus has done it for us? Everybody's making mistakes. But they need the Lord. They don't need our judgment. And how are we going to give them Jesus if we judge them? When God's not judging them, we're giving them a wrong impression of who God is. 
Psalms 118.5. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me, and he set me free. They're in distress. They need to call on the Lord. How are they going to do that if they haven't heard? I didn't know I was a sinner until I sat in front of those pastors and I realized that I had a sin problem in my life. What did I do? I called on the name of the Lord and He saved me. Go and save the lost. Love them. Love them first. Then share Jesus with them. Amen? Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I just thank you for the gift of your son. We don't understand just how powerful that gift is, Lord. I pray you would just reveal to our hearts just how much you desire for us to love the people around us. Not judging them, but releasing them from their guilty verdict and showing your love to them closing the case and just saying you're not guilty Jesus paid for your sins Lord help us give us opportunities to share your love with others in Jesus name everybody said amen, amen. all right let's turn our attention over here to the baptismal it's our first baptism with the new baptismal come on come on guys it's a big deal trust me you guys don't understand, do they, Leroy? What's been, what this has taken for us to get to this place. I love you guys so much, man. Now, it's, Martita, it's, uh, it's your spiritual birthday, right? And she just wanted to reaffirm that and get baptized. And then I was like, you know, and we were all like, let's have her husband do it, right? Let me see if I can get this to come on. Just have you share just a little bit, and then we're going to go eat. All right, Joe, there we go. Tell everybody. Hi, everybody. So I'm Martita. I, was, I accepted the Lord when I was 15 years old. I got baptized when I was 17, water baptized. And I did it out of obedience. I understood. But honestly, it's like when you get married, you really don't know what marriage is until you walk through. So I've been saved for 43 years. Today is my 60th birthday. And what better way to celebrate to say, thank you, Jesus. I know who I have. I Amen. know who I am. That's right. And I want to make sure that this time I do it, knowing exactly what I do and telling him my life is completely yours forever. Amen. Amen. So would you guys stretch your hand towards Martita? And uh, Martita, uh, do, you, do you believe in Jesus? <laughs> I knew you did, but you know, that's what we do when we're baptized. You know, anyone can baptize. Any believer can baptize another believer, right? So I think it's so special, Jeff, that you're uh, baptizing her today. So let's go ahead and turn sideways and hold, hold her wrist and step forward a little more over there. Go, keep going. All right. Yeah, there we go. According to your profession of faith, Martita, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in baptism. Raised in the newness of life. Come on, you guys. Give her a big round of applause. Praise God. Guys, we have an amazing breakfast prepared for you. Don't go out that door. Go out this door. Those doors are closed. I'm kidding. But if you got to go, we understand. But go and uh, participate in the breakfast. It's going to be great. It's right through this door. Go into the fellowship hall just like the luncheons. God bless you. We'll see you next week in Jesus.